This is the future. Human error. Evolution. This is the future. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Voss. I'm down here in Columbus, Georgia, visiting Lee and his pretty unique mining farm. You got a unique situation going on, Lee. Tell us more about yourself and your mining farm. Uh, yeah, my name is Lee. I um, started out like pretty much like everyone else. I got on YouTube one day and decided uh, I need uh, another hobby that uh, costs a lot of money. <laughs> and so crypto seemed perfect. <laughs> And so I, you know, just decided one day after I, I worked a healthcare job and decided, you know, had a, a lot of time in the office, and I have a unique uh, arrangement where my lease uh, allows all of my power to be included. Um, so all my internet power and all that is included within my rent. Um, so I decided I was like, well, maybe I need to get a mining rig, and so I went on eBay and bought uh, your friend Joey's uh, rigs. <laughs> the fifty thousand dollar farm in his mom's basement. Yeah. So spoiler, he didn't make it. <laughs> yeah. So he didn't make it. Uh, I bought two of his rigs because I decided I wanted to learn how to build them, and I thought, how's the best way to learn how to build one? I need one running next to it so I can look at it, and why is this poking out of this, and why is this plugged into this, and uh, you know that was uh, pretty far down the rabbit hole of where I started. You know, obviously a little different now, but. I think I can do one in five minutes now. I think it took me about an hour to build a rig back in the day. <laughs> well, yeah, in the beginning, it's like overwhelming. You're like, okay, like all, like you just see all these cables coming off yeah. this power supply, and you're like, all right, I need the PCI E or, or the VGA or are those the same thing? Or what, what's a SATA? And this guy says I can't use SATA because yeah. it'll blow up. And then a molar, a mo Molex cable, and it just goes on and on. Well, the worst is like, you know, so like Corsair and EVGA, they'll use different cables. And mm -hmm. so like, you know, that's the, the hardest part about all this. Everyone thinks, oh, it's mining, build a rig. It's easy. I just ordered all on Amazon. Yeah. Then you start realizing that these parts are used uh, differently in different applications. And so then all of a sudden, yeah, you can build the same rig nine times and, you know, you can get pretty successful with that. But then all of a sudden when you build your rig with, hey, I want to try this different part. And then you didn't realize that Corsair plugs, you know, like, hey, I got all these EVGA cords, you know, let's, let's, let's order a Corsair power supply. Yeah, it turns out they don't work together. Yeah. And so you got to find out these things the hard way and you got to order something and you're 90% done with the build and then all of a sudden it's like, I have to go home, leave this on, <laughs> it, I don't get to turn it on. I totally agree with you. I remember in the beginning, you know, the same stuff and learning, especially I didn't build computers before mining rigs and, and you said that was the same mm -hmm. for you and it's, you know, so I didn't have any kind of background in this. I was like, oh, a power supply is a power supply. You know, I was like, oh, I need one more cable yep. for this rig. I'll just grab it from this, you know, like you said, like a Corsair and an EVGA. So you go and you grab that PCIe power cable from the Corsair. I'll oh, just plug in the EVGA. No, you won't because they're competitors and they just don't align like that. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's why I've got all these uh, extra cables and cords now because you know it's I, I i got tired of that that situation happening so i, I think i when joey was liquidating i bought all of his uh extra and I'll, so now i have I'll a box off. of of all this random parts that it's actually really paid off really well because you'll you'll order everything that you want um like I, I i took something off of it for an octo something that you know like normally octos are you know they come pretty much pre-built you know i mean you plug in the cards and you know Strap, strap it down a little bit. For anyone that doesn't know, what's an octo miner? Uh, so an octo miner is a server style case that um, depending on when you bought them, uh, some have a fan control, some don't. Uh, they're very high powered delta fans that uh, the old ones used to have seven, the new ones have three. Um, I mean, they just, uh, they just push air like nothing I've ever seen. I mean, it's yeah. just so nice. They keep cards cool, easy to maintain. I don't have the right hand size though for them. I don't know. I, I I guess that's how you're able to build octos. Is uh, you've got you got some of the smaller hands. I I, the I don't secret, secret I don't I don't. Blast. I feel like there's these times where you're trying to get to where that part of the motherboard is, and you're trying oh, yeah. to connect that. And it's like my hand doesn't 
fit in there. So that's okay. my only complaint about those Octos. So, so speaking of that and your rigs, what kind of miners are you running right now? How many? Um, so I think we're running about 10 rigs um, 10, now. 10 GPU rigs? 10 GPU rigs and about uh, six ASICs. We have two ASICs uh, sitting aside. I've got a buddy's rig that's on my account. It's easier for me to just maintain it and... Yeah. Earning passive income mining cryptocurrencies is absolutely crazy. Since recording this video, Lee has also expanded into helium mining, and that's what he is the most bullish on. I'll link out directly to a helium miner review and link to buy one if you want to do so down in the description below. So for, uh, you said you have 10 GPU rigs, you know, what are they? What are your favorites? Um, so your I, favorite? I, you know, I really got, um, I started out with NVIDIA. Uh, I wish I would have gone farther down the NVIDIA rabbit hole. You know, I feel like everything that's new comes out for NVIDIA and it's just, you know, it's just that was the way it was, you know, just there are more, um, a lot more options with that. And so, you know, I went down the AMD rabbit hole pretty deep. And so most of my farm is MSI. Um, I've just, I've loved those cards. I love the MSI gaming. I like the MK2s. Um, I find the gamings to be a little running a little cooler than the MK2s, but mm -hmm. this is still, you know, personal preference and, you know, one's in a minor cave server style and then one's in an Octo, so you, know, you can't compete with an Octo, so I don't know if it's a fair yeah. uh, comparison, but mostly all MSI and, and, and I, and now granted this is before they changed their RMA policy, but that was the thought process was, you know, I didn't want to get stuck with these PNY and, you know, yeah. Zotac that, you know, weren't going to, you know. They're like, say boldly, we will not warranty this car. They say if you mine with it, no warranty. And that's, you know, debatable if you can prove that and so forth. But especially the second hand, they say, you know, you don't have an original purchase receipt. Sorry, dude. Like, not our problem. Yeah, I think, I think of all the cards I've purchased, I think only two or three have been first time owner. Um, everything wow. I did was secondhand, uh, and mainly I did it when Bitcoin was three grand. Yeah, uh, everything was being given away on eBay. Yeah. I mean, I was buying uh, ten packs of MSI at the time, and like we were cleaning up before you got here, and I found those ten that were not even <laughs> open. So we might have to do that for part of the video <laughs> and find out if there's actually even a GPU in those boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Unboxing scene yeah. coming soon. It might be just a brick in there. <laughs> Nothing worse about that little black felt. And you're like, oh no. <laughs> I forget it's always here. We good? Uh oh. Now you gotta hold up and smile like it's Christmas, you know? That's oh, look at this. They even put the sticker back on there to make it look brand new. So, you also talked about your ASIC miners. You know, what do you have? We we're walking through. I saw the Obelisk SC1s. They're one of the most, there's like, uh, talk about hype and also uh, hate and just uh, controversial rigs, you know, super profitable. And then, well, before that, they made nothing. <laughs> they made nothing when they were supposed to make something. People paid a lot of money for those, mm -hmm. you know, basically like over a year out, they finally ship them, get them delivered, whatever. And then they're basically, you know, DOA, dead on arrival bricks. And then they were selling for like over $4,000. Yeah, some of them were going, for, I mean, I, I think I sold for like two of them for $4,800. And I mean, I, I couldn't even, resist the, yeah. I mean, I hate to gouge something like that, but I mean, if somebody's willing to buy two at a time for $4,800 a piece, you, you're obliged to just say, well, let me send them to you. It's, uh, it's also like, you know, it's, it's market price if, if everyone's paying. And that's so they're the paying price. at the time. That's the market price. It was a, I think it was, a, it was, I think it was two or three weeks out right after the fork. So, I mean, I, so I never pre-ordered. I, I am strictly aftermarket. I got all of mine secondhand. Um, I got some from Joey. Um, so Joey is to thank for his liquidation was my benefit and so, uh, or, or vice, one of the two, I, I'm quite <laughs> determined yet. Uh, my downfall or my upcoming, uh, who knows. Well, didn't, didn't you say you pretty much RI broke even? On yeah, so I, I, I was mining since, uh, week one of the fork. So of what fork? Of that, that, um, Sia fork. So, I mean, that, when that went straight to just obelisk. I mean, those. I think I had two that were doing a hundred thousand 
Saya every three days. So like how many dollars did that come out to? Oh, that was at the time, that was probably- 80 bucks. 80 bucks, 80, 90 bucks a day um, yeah. per rig. And so, you know, when, when you got two rigs making $160 a day, um, you kind of don't feel like an idiot. And so, you know, I, I kept them running, I ROI'd, and then uh, market hit uh, the 3,000, I think we all remember that, you yeah. know, and, and the prices of those went and started going down. And, you know, yeah, I would have loved to have sold them again at 4K, but, you know, right now they're paid off. They're, you know, they're making about 50 bucks in Bitcoin. Um, well, not in Bitcoin, but, you know, converting it over to Bitcoin because I'm not going to hold that. So, I mean, 50 bucks every other two days is, you know, I'll take a deposit like that. Hey, can't say no. Nope. <laughs> and that's the thing with mining is, you know, is you get this gear and at some point, you know, if you resell it, maybe that was, you know, in the short term, that was more beneficial. But if you keep running this gear and it's still profitable, especially with, you know, your basically no cost yep. power situation. And especially if the market goes crazy, we, you know, we see a real bull run again here is, you know, it made way more sense to keep that gear than to sell it, you know, at yep. some point along the line. And if you hit we'll that say, point yeah. and move forward, then, you know, you're killing it. And especially if the market, you know, gets again, crazy, you know, nice bull run, everything goes up, then you could also sell the gear then for yeah, more. It's such, a, it's such a challenging thought because right now, since that company is no longer repairing them mm -hmm. um, and there's no boards being made, you know, once they crash, they're gonna crash. It almost makes you wanna just turn them off and wait two years and then turn it back on. But you know, obviously we know how two years in crypto is a long, long time and that, that might not be a good move. And so I'd rather just let them keep running. And, and that's why everybody likes to talk crap about Bitmain and ant miners, but you know, talking to more and more mining farms, everyone who deals you know, in any kind of bulk and ASICs, they rave about I've Bitmain. never had a Bitmain be bad. Yeah, they, they rave about Bitmain customer service. Uh, I've, never, I've never had a bad one either, unless I'm forgetting. I don't think I've had a bad one. There was one um, bicycle miner. No, sure. wasn't there one? Didn't didn't you get an A three? Uh huh. Yeah. How'd that go? It's great. Oh yeah, I'm great. Okay. I got the first one though. I just happened to be up at two a. <laughs> so I just happened to be up at like two a.m. that day because like you're not gonna believe it. I was working on some weird crypto. Sh weird. <laughs> yeah, and I just I just happened to be up and, and you know that those are the days when you, you get an email in the middle of the night. Hey, super profitable mi uh, profitable miner going up for sale. I hope you're available right now to order it. I know. Like, so you needed to have. I don't think like, I've ever made like a batch one. Like when I hear people like, oh yeah, I got on the batch one. I'm like it went out in three minutes. Like how did you even complete the transaction <laughs> in that point? Yeah, and you had, and sometimes it'd be like, hey, we're selling this miner, Bitcoin cash only. I literally held Bitcoin cash for like at least half a year. Just know, for like, Bitmain purchase? Yeah, like a good chunk of it. I believe it. Just so I could be ready to go for the Bitmain purchases. and. Before like that, I was trying to do is when there was no KYC with Shapeshift, and so I could click, click, you know, send my Bitcoin or whatever there, and then I get some Bitcoin cash back, and I would actually set it up to go directly to the Bitmain order, but that was pretty stressful, and I almost missed the deadline once, you know, as that as Bitcoin especially started to slow down, um, I was like, all right, you know, just gonna keep a stash of Bitcoin cash, try to spend on miners. Yep. Yeah. No, I. Um I think some of the most profitable ones I've had, I've always been Bitmain. I mean, I've had two S9s uh, and I got them, I swear, I, the biggest thing I regret in all of this is not just buying a pallet of those S9s when they're going for $165 from Scott yeah. and then just not sitting on it for three months and then selling them all for 450 individually. Like that that's i mean you can't have gains like that you, you don't you barely see that stuff anymore so i had i had two s9s i mean i just finally turned those off recently i mean even everyone always you know free power run it it's you, you get to a point where you start maximizing the amount of heat output you can even really deal with or you know just the amount of voltage and, and amperage you want to be running uh in a certain room and so you start making decisions on everyone always thinks oh it's free it's you know it's it's like free to a point. It's easy to say that you know you run a couple of rigs, but as you're trying to scale up, I, I definitely see your point of view. For and sure. It, and it's you know, do you even want to deal with just that that heat output, like you said, because power is just a part of the equation. Yep. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't know. get out of it. I mean, you're, there's power is always gonna be part of it, and it's just that's just a, a what you need. Yeah. And and so I mean, I had some L3s that. I mean, I think I, I bought them for like 80 bucks a piece with power supplies and it was like, well, yeah, let's, let's get some of these. I ran them for three months and then sold them for $300 a piece. 
And um, so I mean, I, I not only did I make the you know the six hundred dollars, I made another six hundred. So it's like I literally turned one hundred sixty dollars into almost a thousand bucks. And it's like okay, I like these bit mains. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone's always giving them uh, a bunch of hard time, and I'm just like, ah, bit mains working out for me. That's the thing is when like you remove the the whole crypto mindset and decentralization, ASIC miners are the devil, you know, <laughs> style. And, and you look at work. it just from a, a, a more of a business point of view and just acquiring either more dollars or more cryptocurrency, whether that's, you know, Bitcoin, Satoshis, whatever, it's, uh, it's interesting. And it's why you see there's no mining farm that doesn't have some ASICs in it. Yeah, I can't You're, think of the last time I spent hours um, debugging or uh, figuring out why this miner wasn't running. Like, it doesn't happen. It's just like, okay, well, there's six cables. Uh, <laughs> let me pl unplug them and plug them back in. Okay, <laughs> it doesn't work. Well, then it's not working. Uh, so then you got to start opening up. I mean, it's like, I, so I've never had bad boards. I've always been able to run cool temps. So, I mean, ASICs, I mean, if you're scaling, ASICs is, I mean, I, I love how people say they're the bad, they're the devil, but it's like, they just work. Yeah. And then there's people that are constantly refreshing what they're using in terms of hardware. So, I mean, if you're able to recycle it like that, then I mean, it's not, I mean, I don't know if I could do a whole farm of S9s right now comfortably, but I mean, I'd feel almost better about that than 20 S17s at, you know, $3,500 a pop. Yeah, I think, I mean, I just, I just don't see them not making more equipment. I mean, that's just not a reality. I think we've seen, we've been in this industry long enough to see that that's like an endless pipeline. For yeah. Them. I mean, they're just gonna, there's gonna be a, my and ask money. something something next and it'll it'll be double and you know i'd, I'd be nice if they don't have something that's running five thousand watts at one point to get a hundred <laughs> you know terror hashes but i mean <laughs> that's the reality they'll probably make something like that that's yeah uh maxing out a whole 30 amp just on that one so yeah. it, you know it's just that's the reality of of what that that industry is going to be and you know so that's why i kind of like having some gpus it's a little more I mean, like what we've been working on with that CKB, I mean, it's, it's yeah. you know, it's kind of fun to be able to work on a project that is in its infancy. You know, you don't get to do that with an ASIC. Um, Very well, true. Okay, we well, don't get to do that with an ASIC. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> hey, somebody, somebody gets to do it with an ASIC. <laughs> you know the right We people. don't. Uh, so uh, I've yet to meet that person. Well, to get back to your to the mining farm, you know, what's, let's say, like, what's your favorite rig you've got right now? What's, like, the least favorite rig you had? Like, what, what, do you have a rig that you have bought and you're like, wow. I wish I never had this. This thing's just a freaking headache. Um, I would say my, I, it's not currently running. The mining cave, I think it might have been yours or it was Joey's. It was Joseph's. It was Joseph's, okay. <laughs> uh, it, um, the fans just never did it for me. Like when you had it next to an Octo, it just never cooled correctly it, it, for how many fans were running. I mean, with eight fans, it but, should be cooling a little bit better. So I, you know, I regret that one. Uh, I, but what I did was that's well, I have so many other rigs. I disassembled it and started putting them on extra. Um, I, so I did a opposite where, so I had cards and I had parts. I didn't start building trios, but I had parts for trios. I think I got bored one day, <laughs> and so now I have some trios. Uh, so you know, like it's, it. it's like you know, you kind of do it the opposite. You know, you started building trios, and that's how you got into it. So I mean that I love I love the all my octos. I mean I can't. I mean that was the one thing. It's that's the advice that Joey gave me was like if I could do it over again I would do it all in octos. <laughs> and I was like you know that's about the only thing I that he might have been right about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Uh, bang bang Joey taking the shots. Lee, what's like the biggest learning experience you've had going into this? Like if there, you had like one takeaway, one piece of advice like to give to someone who wants to get into crypto and especially mining it like any capacity, what, what would you tell them? What would you tell Baby Lee? And I feel like that question comes up a lot. You know, like people are always coming in and being like, you know, it's like, it's like all of a sudden they just came out from under a rock and like, what should I do? Or should I get a rig? I want a rig. Should I mine? And I mean, like, I'm always so torn because I'm like, I'm like, if that's something you want, I think Greer put it out, you know, it's like an expensive hobby. If that's what you have the expectation, that it's an expensive hobby that you can make money at, then that's a great idea to do. But that's like, that's a good way to put it. I don't it. think it's a great time right now to scale out a whole farm. Um, if you have a farm, and keep running it as long as it's still profitable. But um, I mean, I think the, I think that what's under undervalued is these gamer miners like I think so many people don't realize like they think they need a six card rig or a you know an eight card rig you know and they don't realize that 
When you step up from six cards to eight cards, there's a lot more problems that happen. When you step up from eight to thirteen or twelve, you know, there's a lot more problems that happen. A lot of people overlook that, and like the, just the difference between six and eight. You know, if you throw like M two adapter in there, it's, it, it's, it's so much better. It's like no, you don't realize you're adding. Like it would be so much better just to have four more cards on a different rig. Mm -hmm. like and you'll have less problems. And all, yeah, and then you get more heat than you expected. Is your power supply good? You're probably Matt. You probably are already pushing the boundaries. Like sixteen hundred watts doesn't actually mean sixteen hundred watts. Exactly. And so I think I think you know I, I think like the gaming miner is undervalued. I think like if somebody wants a ballin, you know, uh, ray tracing car, or they want a you know, mm -hmm. I just personally you know for mining I can't justify those Radeon seven prices you know i i just there I, I can't it's heavy imagine spending seven eight hundred dollars on something just for strictly mining now if you had one of those in a desktop that you gamed on i mean you want to mine while you're not gaming why that's, not i think that's the move mm -hmm. uh it helps decentralize the hash i mean well i i think it's like a uh, we're biased as crypto guys but like you know steam should yeah, have their own farm yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, steam should get a farm <laughs> <laughs> steam should have their own little miner that you just you know turn on and they could even just throw it at main coins that doesn't mean we need steam coin you yeah. know but you know like steam they could just have this little miner you know say comparable to things like the nice hash miner and kudo miner or whatever and just straight reward you in their you know uh, dollar like steam coins. yeah I mean, yeah like what, you what, get benefits in the i don't really use steam very yeah much, but like at the same time like it could just be like their own internal yeah exactly just like literally dollars on their platform only yeah and like you don't have to deal with anything crypto and but you would you know be able to use your computing power and you know save it up towards that game you wanted and I, yeah. I, you would be i mean this may be offensive in 2019 but you'd be if that was the case and that was all set up and, and you use steam or whatever other gaming platform you'd be an idiot not to run it you got the gear it's all set up and if it yeah it's, i mean that's like when i hear about somebody just got you know i mean i, I my desktop's meant to be uh, task oriented powerful, but graphics wise, I wanted more monitors, less about you know 4K and less about ray tracing and all that kind of stuff. So I mean, I've just got quad quattros mm -hmm. in there running those, and those just 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 fine. I mean, that's probably offensive to say on a crypto channel, but at the same time, I know, right? Uh, but like, why do I need to 5700? You know. You, you don't. Know, I don't. And so <laughs> it, it's just, it, it's not necessary. And so I think that's what I wish people would understand more is that like, they don't get it. They're like, you have all this computing hardware. Why don't you do something? So that's why I wish something else would come out. I wish like, I wish there'd be more user capabilities to getting into like rendering or mm -hmm. AI. Like I wish there was more platforms where you could rent your hash out to do stuff like that. I wish it wasn't just crypto or nothing. Yeah, that's the next big hurdle. There's definitely some big projects working on it, some with some serious financial backing, but we're still not there yet. And and honestly, uh, some like there's mining farms like that are gearing up for that, yeah. which is kind of crazy, kind of scary, because you know, trying to you know make a buck as the little guy, it's like, well, good luck competing against this data center I that's think, been waiting I for that, this. I guess that's the advice is that I think that. You know, if you have the ambition that it's going to be a hobby or you're going to enjoy it, mm -hmm. then do it. But if you have this ambition of building out a full-on data center without being a data network engineer, I mean, it's a lot more lofty of a goal than it seems mm -hmm. when you're first starting. I mean, yeah. even myself, I have a moderately decent size arm for being an individual, and I couldn't really keep up with the hardware that's coming in. So, yeah. You know, it's... It's it's a loftier goal than you think. So, one one other last quick question before we wrap it up is: What do you think about the future of Bitcoin and the price? So, like, what do you think Bitcoin will be, you know, over the next year, price wise? So that's my thing about the whole Bitcoin thing is like everyone always is like expecting the world to burn. They want like all fiat to go away. Yeah. They want Bitcoin to be the thing. Like, I don't think people realize like how much of the world's economy is backed up by the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. And a lot of bad things will happen if that happens. <laughs> and so, like, I don't want that to happen. I want we're probably, digital gold. We're probably not going to be on the computer <laughs> if the U.S. dollar yeah, is gone. Yeah, we're in big trouble. I mean, a lot of more things are happening than that. And we'll be so, stockpiling ammunition. Yeah. Uh, and so, sure enough, I just, I, you know, I think, I think it's going to be stable at this price for a little while. Um, but I think some monumental is going to have to happen, like a halving or. Um, you know, something's going to have to happen because the problem is everyone's getting discouraged with how 
prices are going down in terms of profits. People are going to start shutting rigs off again. But I don't. I think there's always going to be these mega farms that have one cent electric, and they'll be able to keep it going. So, like right now, like there's 60 terahashes on that CKB thing. Like that shouldn't be on a test net. <laughs> but we can't compete with that because that's a private farm with probably some ridiculous rate. So I'm hoping for it to go up. Uh, you know, obviously I have a, a good bit of my portfolio into you know Bitcoin. Um, so I'm definitely rooting for it. <laughs> That's uh, right. But I mean, like, I'm not going to be one of those fools that says, man, I'm waiting for it to go down to 8000 to buy. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I, I, I'm glad I didn't buy it at 20 But I'm also glad that I didn't pretend that it wasn't going to go back up to 9 when yeah. it was at 3 So um, I'm glad I bought it a lot when, I was, when it was at 3 All right. Well, I'm happy for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Lee, do you have any final remarks for the viewers? I would say that if you're interested in crypto, get on Voss channel and just start watching some videos. And then, you know, after you watch five or six of them, if it's something that's really of interest to you, then, you know, jump in, you know, get your toes wet, you know, and, and build a rig. Um, if it isn't after five or six videos, then just enjoy it as something to, you know, and just dollar cost average. Get yourself some Bitcoin on. I mean, I don't want to shill it but I mean just go get yourself a Coinbase account and or go get yourself a Gemini or a um, Binance a US, Binance US <laughs> account if you they don't do Binance US in Georgia uh, shucks way to go Binance yeah thanks uh, uh, CZ all on the walls <laughs> um, so I mean you know I just I would say you know if it's something that you're interested in go for it but if you're not uh, really just 100% committed like if you're not committed to going at midnight to go reboot a rig just to turn something off and then turn back on then don't do it because that's, that's, that's what it's like you will you will be there you will be on the night shift sometimes <laughs> and then you know nothing will happen for three months so it's it's just it, you never know so if you don't want to do that then don't do it <laughs> ups and downs up ups and downs just like bitcoin yeah, <laughs> but, <laughs> all right well hey lee it was awesome thanks so much for having us down here yeah thanks for coming and uh this is like that really awesome super like typical cheesy outro like we're just gonna walk out the door right now but this is it uh lee do you think these people should hit the thumbs up oh they should yeah, oh yeah you think and subscribe mm. yeah definitely all right all right yeah maybe a comment too we'll see you guys next time please be advised there are scammers impersonating us on multiple platforms I don't want your money, I just want you to smash that subscribe button. Everything in this video is for entertainment purposes only. That means it's not financial advice. I want to say thanks to ImmersionSystems.io for sponsoring the BossCoin Mining Farm Tour video series. Without them, this wouldn't have been possible at all. If you watched episode one of season one, then you will have seen us tour Mark's mining farm where he utilizes Immersion Systems immersion cooling setup. Top quality gear, and Mark was one of their first customers, and so he's one of their oldest customers, and he couldn't be happier with it. Originally made for their own personal money farms that they've now brought to market. If you want to set up, reach out to them.